She's a beloved former colleague and caring friend with an Emmy-winning career spanning five decades and a recent star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Listen, you only have to scroll through social media comments to see how celebrated Kathy Lee Gifford is. I read someone call her a bright light, an inspirational spirit. Somebody called her a national treasure. Now, but I, I have to tell you, back in 2019, some people couldn't understand why Kathy Lee Gifford chose to walk away from what appeared to be a dream job hosting the fourth hour of today. But Kathy Lee says she felt guided by her faith to follow a new calling. And that has led her to her next chapter, co-writing a faith-based song titled The God Who Sees, which has been streamed almost two million times on Spotify alone. Now, that success inspired her to direct a short film by the same name, and that film has now raked up more than eight million views on YouTube. Please welcome to the TFM for the first time in person, the one and only Kathy Lee Gifford. do this year after year. <laughs> oh, Taryn, you look wonderful, honey. Oh, I'm you, so glad you just you, called her. <laughs> Listen. Okay, so I was thinking, when was the last time I saw you? And I, in person, because right. we talked over Zoom, yeah. and I found this picture. They said, go through your picture. January 2018, Clive Davis, pre-Grammy oh party. Grammy party. We were at the Grammy party. <laughs> Yeah, that's always the biggest party of the year. It you is. Know? It's a great, and, and we uh, love him so much. And I was thinking again, I said, gosh, now that you're in Nashville, how many years now? Um, uh, four years ago, I bought my first place there, thinking it would be like a little put in my foot in it. You know, just I was so happy writing music there and making music with people and worshiping the way I wanted to worship, which, you know, yeah. And that lasted about six months because I loved it so much. I said, no, I'm supposed to be here, be here. Yeah. So I bought a bigger place where I could have a whole bunch of people over and have a lot of, I like, I like home church. Yeah. So your home has this communal thing, which is yeah. perfect because you're a grandmom now. Well, yes. Cody he, has the Cody baby. has, a, Cody used to. Oh. Uh, <laughs> And look, at look at him posing up oh, like he's grandma. He's such a little poser. And everything they say about being a grandmother, which I thought was like, I don't think so. Yeah. Oh, I'm worse. You're worse. I'm worse. <laughs> I try. I, I, I really, but it is really true about him. Yeah. It's everything. <laughs> and I love his name is Frank. His name is, we call him Frankie. Yeah. That's Cody oh. and the baby. That's, that's, that's his beautiful wife, wife. Erica. And boy, all that money I spent on Oxford for an education <laughs> and all the money I spent on those teeth, it was worth every penny that I see. I mean, good looking kid. But I mean, I had the pleasure of meeting Frank at your home when you hosted all of us one year in Connecticut. Right. right. And then. Oh, yeah. It was a, a, such a sweet time. And then to see you reset and through faith, find your way forward. Yeah, we all have to do that. Whether you have a famous name or you, you know, you feel like uh, nobody knows your name. God does. That's why, I, that's why Tamron, uh, Nicole yeah. and I wrote The God Who Sees. Yeah. She and I wrote uh, The God Who Sees together because for all the people out there who, especially as we age, Tamron, yeah. you haven't yet, but you will one day. <laughs> um, people start to feel more and more and more invisible, don't yeah. we? We do. And then all of a sudden, this strange phenomenon happens, which is people we know, whether we know them well or we know them intimately, they all start to die all around the same time. It reminds you, you know what? You're, you're going to die one day, too. Mm. So you, ch you start to cherish the time you do have yeah. more. Yeah. You, don't, you don't waste stuff the same way, do you? Yeah. And I think that's why the, in uh, the Bible, 
Paul talks about how, you know, think on this, think about what is good yeah. and pure and noble and praiseworthy yeah. and fill your life with that. You know, I, you know what, it's so funny to, to watch you effortlessly quote Paul on a daytime show. When you started out, people didn't want you talking about faith as openly, and some people thought it was bad for business. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you see, I've never separated the secular from the spiritual. Yeah. I didn't work in a, spec a secular world. I, I work in God's world. Yeah. And, and there are people in that world who know him and honor him. You know many at our show, yes. many of them. But they felt like they had to be secret about it. You know, they'd come up and, and they'd go, I'm a believer too. Can we pray in your, dressing, in your dressing room afterwards? And I go, yeah, you can come to my dressing room and pray with me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, was it... Was it ever frustrating or intimidating when you knew, okay, the brass in the no. office were going to complain? No, they never asked me once to Nobody. tone it down. Well, where no. were you hearing it from? Was it? Um, you know, people, they love to let you know stuff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm, bless their hearts. <laughs> they do. They love, and the more religious they are, the more they feel like the Lord told them to tell you. Yeah. I learned so long ago, Tamara, and this is, I think, why I've lasted as long as I have. Very few people's opinions matter. Very few. When we come back, Kathy Lee's new film bringing epic stories to the big screen and more on how her faith is her guiding light in this new chapter. That's next. The Way is an epic journey through time. From the dawn of creation to the building of a nation and the conquest of the promised land to the birth of the baby who would save the world from sin. Wow. Welcome back. We're talking with guests who use their faith as a guiding light through life. I'm with TV trailblazer Kathy Lee Gifford, and that was a clip from The Way, a new faith based film that she's written, directed, and narrated. As and paid there. for. <laughs> and paid for the movie. Is that the heart of Kathy Lee's newest chapter? And it also comes with a companion book titled The God of the Way, which has quickly become a New York Times bestseller. I have to tell you, you know, in the book you say, um, it confirmed to me what I am supposed to do with the remaining years of my creative life. Tell the amazing, epic, ancient stories in the Bible in a brand new way. Yes. Because people don't know there's so much biblical illiteracy and ignorance, yeah. and they just haven't been taught right, you guys. Yeah. They haven't been taught. There are terrible translations of the Bible out there that have caused so much uh, anger and dissension and division. The Bible should have never been separated into Old Testament and New Testament. Yeah. It's one beautiful love story. And people don't, they think, oh, the, the, you know, the Old Testament was, was about the law, and, and, and that's for the Jews. And the New Testament is about Jesus and mercy. Mercy. No, it's we need justice and mercy. Yeah. So it's all, it's all, you know. You've been traveling to Israel for how long now? Uh, my first trip to uh, Israel was when I was 17, and I, w I missed my high school prom because I was going to the first Jerusalem conference on biblical prophecy when I was 17. <laughs> I've always been a Bible nerd in the sense that I was just, the, the stories captivated me. I've always been a storyteller my whole life. Always wanted to be, uh, my dream job was never to be a talk show host. Really? My dream job was to be in Disney movies and on Broadway. Those were my God-given dreams. The others, uh, I fell into wonderful blessing. Yeah. I happened to work with a guy named Regis Philbin. I, I know. just I was thinking about that. Listen. Your studio is right next, we're right next door. Right. When you walked into our studio, do you, how does that feel? You know, I was in our little neighborhood today because I did 15 years with Regis from that studio. And we were a local show when I first joined him. I left Good Morning America to be with Regis because I wanted, I didn't want to read from a teleprompter. Yeah. I wanted to be my own person and um, fail or, or succeed uh, just as the person that I am authentically. You would talk about your children Cassidy and Cody, and I remember the parodies, and I thought, wait a minute, this is a woman who is a working mom on TV, and she's yeah. doing what we all do at work, which is talk about our children. Right, but and I was it, paid to do it. And you were paid to do it, and it always rubs some people, which was so peculiar. Now my son is 
actually on the other side of that wall, and I think about your journey trying to yeah. be on TV and share your children and share who you are, your authentic self. Well, with we I happened to be single when I first started yeah. with Regis, and I met Frank, and then we got married, and then I had our children a couple of years later. So Regis's children were already grown; they were like in teenagers. Don't talk about me, Dad. Don't you talk, uh-uh, no, no. And see, he was muzzled. Right. And Regis did not like to be muzzled. <laughs> so he would talk about what movie he saw last yeah. night and what Broadway this, show, Mr. Yeah. Mr. Out About Town. I go, I have mastitis and my nipples are killing me. <laughs> you know, it was the first time. Nobody it had ever talked time. about motherhood I, on TV. And I got a little graphic about it sometimes because yeah. I'm an actress. <laughs> and I would, I would, you know, I'd, I'd describe what that's like and he'd go, oh. <laughs> And it worked. It worked. We were each other's best audience. Yeah. And I just miss him every day. I love that man dearly. We became closer friends, Tamron, after oh, we stopped working together. Yeah. We worked together 15 years, and for the next 20 years, we were just, we just hung out as as, as I remember as him popping by the Today Show to see yeah. you and beyond. Yeah, he was, was my connection. favorite guest after that. Talk about authentic. Yeah. You know, there are very few people, a lot of successful people, and they work hard and they deserve their success. Other people are just born with a particular gift that cannot be stifled. Mm. He was uh, irrepressible. Oh. And, and even he was like that, you guys. We'd go out to dinner or something. I'd think, oh, we're going to have a nice, quiet dinner tonight. I'd go, no, we're going out with, with Regis. <laughs> and so we'd go to a restaurant. And I'd like to just sort of quietly come in, you know, and sit in the corner and stuff. He comes in, that's right, Regis is here. 